Hi everyone. Today we are going to dive into the world of standard discrete time signals. Okay. So basically these signals are like the building blocks of more complex signals and they are super important to understand if you want to study signals and systems. Interestingly, these elementary signals can be utilized to model a vast array of physical signals that occur naturally. We call these signals elementary or standard signals. Now you might be wondering what are some examples of standard discrete time signals. Well, we have the digital impulse signal which is also known as unit impulse sequence. We have the unit step signal the ramp signal, the exponential signal, the discrete time sinusoidal signal and the complex exponential signal. In today's session, we will be exploring each of these signals in detail. So let's jump right in and get started. Let's talk about the distal impulse signal, which is also known as unit sample or unit impulse sequence fine so the discrete time unit impulse sequence denotes as del of n how to denote this by del of n okay can be defined as what so let's see the functional representation it can be defined as for n is equal to 0 del of n is equal to 1 and for n not equal to 0, del of n is equal to what? 0. Clear? So, in simpler terms, the unit sample sequence is a signal that has a value of 0 everywhere except at n is equal to 0 where it has a value 1. Clear? Fine. So, this signal is super important when it comes to analyzing signals and systems. It's like the building block that we use to understand how things work. Fine. So this is how we can represent the digital impulse signal or unit sample sequence. Okay. So this is a functional representation. If you want to see the graphical representation, so this is what a graphical representation. So del of n versus n. So, at n is equal to 0, the value of del of n is what? 1. So, that means the unit impulse sequence is 0 everywhere except at n is equal to 0, where its value is what? Unity 1. I hope this graphical representation and functional representation is clear to you. For which signal? Unit impulse signal. Clear? Fine. Now let's talk about the unit step signal. Okay. So this signal is super important for analyzing many discrete time systems. Basically, it's a signal that only exists for positive time and is zero for negative time. It is equivalent to applying a signal whose amplitude suddenly changes and remain constant at the sampling instants forever after application. In between the discrete instants, it is what? Zero. Fine. So, the unit step signal, which is basically denoted by u of n, is defined as u of n is equal to 1 for n greater than or equal to 0 and it is 0 for n smaller than 0. That is why we are saying like it exists only for positive time and is zero for the negative time. Hope this is clear to you. Okay, let's move to the next. Fine. So this is what a graphical representation of a unit step signal. Fine. So basically when the step function has a magnitude of one, we refer to it as a unit step function or a unit step signal. If you see the magnitude of u of n at every instant of n, okay, n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 means 
at every instant n greater than equal to 0 the magnitude is what here 1 fine magnitude of the signal is what 1 here or you can say the amplitude of the signal is 1 so that is why we are calling it as what unit step signal unit step signal fine so to be more precise the unit step signal is defined as u of n is equal to 1 for n greater than equal to 0 and 0 for n smaller than 0 so it only exists for the positive time and becomes 0 for the negative time pretty cool right so that is all about the basics of a unit step signal now let's talk about the ramp signal or unit ramp sequence fine so the ramp signal denoted as r of n is a sequence that begins at n is equal to 0 and gradually increases over time in a linear fashion fine so the ramp signal r of n is the sequence which starts at n is equal to 0 and increases linearly with time cool so here's how it's defined so for n greater than or equal to 0 r of n is equal to what n and for n less than 0 r of n is equal to 0 i hope this is clear to you so this is what a functional representation now let's explore the graphical representation so as per the definition like what we have learnt that it will start at n is equal to 0 and increases linearly with time see it is a linear fashion at n is equal to 1 the amplitude of the signal is 1 at n is equal to 2 the amplitude is 2 at n is equal to 0 the amplitude is 0 at n is equal to 3 the amplitude is what 3 so it is increasing in which fashion linear fashion that is why we are calling it as what a ramp signal fine or unit it is what ramp or ramp signal or you can say as unit ramp sequence unit ramp sequence so hope this is clear to you fine cool okay now let's explore the relationship between unit ramp sequence and the unit step signal so we'll see the relationship between unit ramp sequence and unit step signal so it is defined as r of n is equal to n into u of n so this is what the relationship between the unit ramp sequence and unit step signal fine so the unit ramp sequence r of n is equal to the n times u of n cool right so that's all you should know about ramp signal at this stage fine now are you ready to dive into the exciting world of exponential signals so the next is what exponential signal fine so an exponential signal is basically defined as g of n is equal to a to the power n for n greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for n less than 0 so this is what the functional definition or the functional representation of an exponential signal hope this is clear to you fine now here is the interesting part depending on the value of a this a to the power n is there right so depending upon the value of a we can either experience a thrilling decreasing exponential signal or a heart pumping increasing exponential signal so if a falls between 0 and 1 we will be in for a wild ride with a decreasing exponential signal okay on the other hand if the value of a is greater than 1 we will be showing high and accelerating increasing exponential signal pretty cool right so basically if the value of a 
is between 0 to 1 you will get what a decreasing exponential signal and if the value of a is greater than 1 you will get what increasing exponential signal so this is what increasing exponential signal and if the value of a falls between a and 1 sorry 0 and 1 so it is called as what decreasing exponential signal basically you will get what decreasing exponential signal in this case fine so that's all about this lecture in next lecture we will discuss about the discrete time sinusoidal signal don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome contents thanks for watching